Welcome to the webinar to reshape bamboo. It begin with the shoot version two. So, melentu bulu biarlah dari rebungnya. This program is organized by Malaysia Bamboo Society and STEM Malaysia. My name is Cairo Aidil Azim. I will be the moderator for today's webinar. Ladies and gentlemen, esteemed educators, passionate advocates on sustainability and, and bright young minds gathered here today. It's, it is an honor to welcome you to the webinar, the ambition, a greener, more harmonious future. One where bamboo takes a center stage in our school and our lives. I stand before you to introduce a captivating exploration of the transformative potential of bamboo. A plant that emerged from humble beginning to inspire a revolution in sustainable living. Today, we are privileged to have esteemed experts from Malaysia and Asian region who will illuminate the path forward through their insight and experience we will delve in, into the remarkable facet of bamboo a renewable and eco-friendly material that holds the promise of change it's a journey that leads us through the sustainable landscape of bamboo explore the artistry of design and innovation it's offer and reveal the story of school and educational institution that have embraced bamboo as a cornerstone of their mission. Today, we are fortunate to have three speakers. Yeah? First, I would like to introduce our first speaker, which is Dr. Mazalina Manso. He's a president of Malaysian Bamboo Society since 19, uh, since 2019, with many potential partnership enables her to assist nation local community, especially in dealing with bamboo farming towards producing a better greener lumber product. He's a co-leader of forest community farming program on fast growing timber species under MPMA. So, I think he has very long CV, but without further ado, I would like to invite Dato, Dr. Madalina Manso to present his speech. Please welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kairul Azlin, for having uh, to wake up early this morning uh, to have a webinar kickoff together with STEM. I'm thankful to MBS and STEM. STEM, uh, Mr. Ramesh Pillay, who has been uh, kindly organized this. Uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh to all listeners. A very good morning, uh, especially to students, teachers, and parents out there that are attending this webinar. My sincere thanks to you for your Saturday time to listen to us. Our talk on Melento Buloh Biarlah Dari Rebungnya, translated by Mr. Ramesh, to reshape bamboo, it begins with the shoot. This is a second series. Our first series was in 2021. As MBS is committed to uh, creating public awareness, we aim to provide information to kids through school programs. Thus, my talk today, I will share uh, my uh, slide now. I will open. See. Okay. Okay. I hope you can see this. Um, I will present some uh, ideas uh, and programs that are suitable for school to adapt and carry out. Uh, but first of all, let me recap some basic facts about bamboo. 
bamboo it belongs to the grass family so when you know about grass it really grow very very fast so bamboo have a stem what we call kong the leaf and the shoots and in the in the uh, sub -fam uh, in the family of poesy and sub family bamboosoidae so this the flower looks like any of the uh, grass flower and seeds like what you can see from our paddy so it can be reshaped yeah bamboo can be reshaped as as young as possible so that it maintains the shape uh, throughout its growth so you can see this speech uh um uh the it has been reshaped and maintain the look of it and this can fetch a very high price bamboo growth there are two types sometimes three but in the climate it's clumping that's why we call room cone and in the temperate is running is mono uh growth of running this uh type so this is why uh in in malaysia as part of the tropics we used to see this type of uh, bamboo growth and the height can range up to 100 feet to the small as six inches and this shows that bamboo in, in the world about 1600 species and malaysia have about 75 to 80 uh, species uh, within our forest but in the world we can see bamboo variety of colors are many in malaysia we always see yellow green or dark green or black but all over in china and in in the russia in taiwan they have other colors like red blue purple and so on and these are highly priced too so can you see around you that made uh things that make from bamboo so student uh in the world of bamboo we we have identified 12 segments that bamboo plays its role uh, from the nursery to plantation to construction, interior decor, furniture, handicraft, textile, food, medicine, transport, in entertainment, and energy. <coughs> and and a quick uh, facts about bamboo: it <coughs> grow, <coughs> it grows and mature very fast within three to five years. You can already harvest your bamboo and can live for hundreds of years. It belongs to the grass family graminae it able to grow and thrive in almost any environment especially the if you think there is a, a very uh, abundant uh, you know deserted area um, you can plant bamboo and it thrives very well and bamboo play an important role in determining forest structure and dynamics and help to restore ecosystem bamboo is very bothered by insects and pests so therefore there's lesser use of pesticide and we can confirm or can ensure that we have a healthier environment when bamboo uh, is thriving. Bamboo absorb 40% more carbon and uh, carbon dioxide and release 35% more oxygen compared to trees. Thus, bamboo sequester carbon at an efficient level. One hectare of bamboo plantation can absorb about 12 to 17 tons of carbon dioxide from the air annually. So this is why bamboo is says to be the green and, and sustainable plant on earth. Here I'm presenting 10 ideas for incorporating bamboo into your school program. First is the bamboo ecology and environment. Teachers, you can introduce kids to the ecological importance of bamboo as it rules, provide uh, habitat for various animal contribution to soil erosion prevention. You can see here the roots really uh, uh, secure the earth uh, so that the soil doesn't erode easily. And participate, get the students to participate in the voluntary community activity related to bamboo for environment. As what you can see here, students planted together with uh, the government agency along the river where they have the JPS, that is Jabatan Perairan dan Saliran activities in Malaysia, uh, throughout Malaysia for 100 kilo, 100,000 kilometer uh, area. And then we dis discuss how bamboo can help mitigate the climate change due to its fast growth and carbon sequestration abilities. And next, teachers, you can explore the cultural significance uh, of bamboo in different countries in regions such as the use of traditional craft, music instrument, and architect. You can see here, students participate during the um, 
uh, one of the uh, seni kampung that teaches the, the kids about weaving uh, kalerai or the weaving of bamboo strips. Teach the kids about the historical importance of bamboo in the various culture and the symbolism in art and literature. There are plenty in Korea, in Japan, uh, in Indonesia. Uh, they are very artistic and we always remember I used to play angklung in my school team before. You can create a bamboo corner, story corner in the school library for bamboo uh, society. You can create that also and always meet up and, and discuss with students about the importance. Third is bamboo in science and technology. You can highlight the use of bamboo in engineering and construction. Dr. Prof. Nang Kula will highlight after my talk, showcasing potential ability in sustainable building design and discuss how scientists are search, researching bamboo's potential in the modern technologies such as using the material in composite materials and biofuel. You can see today you no longer have plastic straw, it can be a bamboo straw. Please use a very, uh, you know, biodegradable uh, application of uh, your daily use of like straw, charcoal. Bamboo also be used for roof trusses and bamboo roof. So you know how eco-friendly are bamboo products because they are faster growing plants on earth. Bamboo is good for the environment, is strong and durable and is safe and hygienic. Uh, our university, I mean, um, MBS has been collaborate with student university in UKM to uh, set up bamboo garden in their botanical garden. Uh, UPM, Prof uh, K has been, Prof Cairo has been having bamboo gallery right now. It's still ongoing and there is a bamboo design competition. Uh, UITM uh, create bamboo printers for students to sell their products. And in UPM, they have uh, bamboo talks and lecture. Join them. You know, whenever you have uh, the knowledge, uh, the, the news about this happening, bring your student along and attend. Number four, bamboo innovation. I just focus on craft and art. There are plenty of in innovation. You can organize workshop for kids to create and innovate their own bamboo craft, such as bamboo wine, chimes, baskets, or simple musical instrument. Encourage the kids to explore bamboo as an artistic medium for drawing, painting, and sculpture. And uh, organize a bamboo creative weekend with the with group competition. There are plenty online. You can just Google and get the ideas and create for your school. Next, uh, number five, bamboo in literature and poetry. Plenty of poetry you can find online that uh, describe about bamboo. So explore how bamboo has been celebrated in literature and poetry throughout the history and challenge the students to write their own poem inspired by bamboo. One that is uh, in 1907, Soin Nakagawa in Japan, I am the wind dancing with the bamboo flute. The bamboo that bends is stronger than the oak that resists, the Japanese proverb. Uh, just like melento bulo biar dari rebungnya is Malay proverb. So you can start, uh, you know, have the class to recite in front of the class about bamboo, whatever they think of as a poetry. Number six, bamboo and sustainability. You can teach the kids about bamboo role in sustainable living, including its rapid growth, minimal need for pesticide and fast or fertilizer, and potential to replace traditional material like wood and plastic. Discuss bamboo as a renewable resource and how it cultivation can support local economies. Uh, you can see in, in Kyoto, they have created the bamboo uh, forest and now it uh, among the uh, yeah, income generation for, uh, for Japan as tourists, millions of tourists come in each year and we can create the same with our own bamboo in Malaysia. Bamboo, number seven, bamboo and garden, uh, for gardens and planting, all what I can focus on bamboo system. You can establish a bamboo system that is an ex situ, means you collect from outside natural and bring it to a place like your school. Uh, a, a samples of different bamboo species. You can collect the bamboo that grows surrounding your village or nearby forest near to your school and work together with the forester so that you can bring out some and start planting and do the collection and plant and create a bamboo garden on your school premises and uh, landscape your, your school with bamboo. 
Here are some of the pictures you can see. Visit a local bamboo grove teaching students about the different species of bamboo and their characteristics. You may not know what type of species, so you can contact MBS, uh, become MBS member and you start learning. We have lots of teachers in our Malaysian Bamboo Society like Cikgu Helmi in Kulai, always eager to teach students about bamboo, organize and hands on planting and uh, how to propagate and care for bamboo plants. So this can be contacted with us uh, and we can happy to go over. I give you an example about bamboo setem, Taman Buluh Kuala Kansa that is conducted and supported by MBS and all Cliffordian Association OCA, including Yayasan Amal Tenaga. It's located in Kuala Kansa, Sekolah Kebasan Clifford. They have collected 30 bamboo species which was launched by uh, Yang Ahmad Mulia Raja di Hile Pera on the 19th May 2020 last year. Within six months, we have completed all this. And in 2023, uh, this year, February, the first hockey dribble lane was established in uh, this place. And you can see the dribble lane is using the artificial grass cover so that the, the student can start training their dribble lane and, you know, hockey dribble. Students also participate to look after and water the bamboo every day. We do collect bamboo growth data. And within a year, what the, the Raja de Hile plant, it already grow into from three uh, step into 10. That's how fast it can grow within a year. And we conduct bamboo program for students on how to identify and learn about basic bamboo. We even give the teachers training on latihan dalam perikmatan, ladap, uh, and also uh, get the kids to draw bamboo as compared to the normal trees. So they really enjoy and, and you know, really take care of the, the uh, bamboo within their own uh, premises. So number eight, bamboo cooking and nutrition. You can introduce the benefit of health benefit of bamboo shoot like what's presented here. Introduce kids to the culinary uses of bamboo shoot in various cuisine. Discuss their nutritional value and preparation method. Arrange a cooking demonstration where students can learn to prepare dishes using bamboo shoot. Like this, uh, uh, this is uh, Dr. Zaf uh, kid who's trying to make uh, lemang, which is very well known among the Malay or Hari Raya. We have uh, putu bamboo. Uh, this is common in uh, Pasar Malam. This is the bamboo shoot and have created the bamboo class, bamboo uh, culinary class. So you can see the benefit is in weight loss, risk of cancer, strengthen uh, immune system, anti-inflammatory, uh, help in improving cardiovascular health, effects towards respiratory diseases, stomach ailment, cure snake and scorpion bites, beneficial for cholesterol level, that is bamboo shoot. So that's one of it. There are many other parts, even Hue Chang, the Chinese uh, dumpling, is also using the uh, bamboo leaf. Number nine, bamboo and biodiversity. You can educate the students about biodiversity that strive in bamboo forests. In Malaysia, we can say the bamboo forest within the Tapah area or the Klanta, anywhere there is a clearance of uh, forest, bamboo will shoot up as a pioneer species because it loves, uh, you know, sunshine and it grows very fast. So in this area, you can find birds, insects and mammals, like even the orang besar, yeah, gajah, Elephants uh, like to harvest bamboo uh, for their dietary. We don't have panda, but our, the panda in the zoo, Negara, our zoo is really enjoying our bamboo species from Malaysia as compared to their original bamboo. And they have uh, very productive in giving uh, little panda, two pandas being uh, born in our zoo. So orangutan and also lima. So, uh, we should emphasize the importance of preserving bamboo habitat for this biodiversity. So students, you can see a lot of things can be done with bamboo. Last and not least, the tenth idea is having a bamboo field trips. Organize a field trip to the bamboo plantation or the bamboo botanical garden, bamboo nurseries or cultural centers where the students can interact and discover the bamboo firsthand. Uh, 
join a bam uh, create a bamboo bike team because they're already assisting uh, making your own bamboo uh, bicycle and and this can be done uh, by participating and we have uh, experts in uh, making it right last week uh, IR Mazlan already create a class uh, for bamboo uh, creating bamboo bike okay so plenty of nursery have already put up uh, you know like Zen uh, bamboo uh, landscape uh, example in the uh, Genting where uh, Tanah Tinggi um, Japanese garden is up there and uh, you know weaving and, and uh, making this a nice uh, culture of uh, using bamboo strips so um, I know I'm uh, giving a lot of chance uh, because uh, uh, the, this this uh, uh, speech can be only last for 15 minutes I hope I'm on time so bamboo can be a fascinating and versatile topic to explore and create uh, awareness among, about bamboo as part of school program and get the students and parents to join the activities on weekend or in the evening or morning wherever they are free. You can tell it, make these ideas to age group of your students and resources available to you and incorporate hands-on activity creates creative projects and inter interactive discussion will help engage and inspire your students in your bamboo theme school program but to find not many will be excited about this because they they were worry about where to get information so to uh, to find assistance in ongoing program reach out online research through online research contact other schools that conduct uh, uh bamboo bamboo system or whatever bamboo uh, activities they have educate um, organization ngo like mbs malaysian bamboo society uh, community centers we even have government incentive initiative uh, towards uh, bamboo you can have your community around your school to participate and you can help and get the students to uh, involve with the community conduct a networking and always contact social media and forum because they will know where things are being given free talks and and media like webinar like what we are giving now so just give a try have fun with bamboo and all the best with that you can contact um, nationbamboosociety.com or our facebook nation bamboo society for further inquiries thank you very much yes thank you very much dr, dr. mazalina it was very informative about bamboo yeah, if you have any question, please uh, you can write in the chat. So our secretariat will uh, collect it, and we will uh, we will present to the panel so that we can discuss this matter in this particular webinar. I would like to extract the important point from her presentation just now, uh, but. That to Dr. Mazalina, uh, he mentioned the use of the bamboo. You know, you can if from from the young shoot, yeah, to into a matured bamboo. And she also explained the activities of uh, uh, in the school, like uh, the school children uh, doing handicrafts, hunting bamboos, and also cooking clubs. So. So from there, they will know the bamboo, the bamboo for the health, and also bamboo diversity, which is we need to to preserve the habitat of the species. Thank you, that that Dr. Madalina was very informative. Now I would like to invite yeah, our second speaker, yes, uh, Professor Dr. Nafla Utabatun. Yeah, he yeah. is a, uh, a professor, professor on architecture, on architecture. Uh, and design, and design. Uh, from U from UCTS. UCTS. Sorry, from from CSI. Uh, currently, he is uh, a head of research and postgraduate study, study. Uh, uh, professor at of attacking as creative protection and building environment. Uh, uh, Professor Nafila 
Dr. Bhattana, who has written 24 academic research books of architecture in Malaysia. Well, he was born in Jakarta and obtained his Doctor of Philosophy and Master of Architecture degree from University of Technology Malaysia in Johor Bahru as the best PhD student and master graduate in 2005. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to invite Professor Dr. Nakula Dr. Bata to make his presentation. Okay, uh, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, my sound is clear, uh, Prof. K? Yes. Yes. Okay, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin. Salatu wassalamu al-asrafil anbiya wa musalim. Sayyidina wa maulana Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in amma ba'di. Alhamdulillah. Uh, first of all, I would like to uh, give a special thanks to the Bamboo Societies, uh, Malaysia Bamboo Societies, uh, Prof. Kairul, uh, Datuk Marzalina. <laughs> uh, hearing your presentation, I heard a lot. <laughs> I learned a lot today. So I think I would like to uh, get involved with, with whatever you have done there. So I think uh, uh, it was very interesting yeah? uh, because bamboo is one of the important uh, materials yeah? that, that, that going uh, very fast. Yeah? Uh, like I'm going to present uh, from the I think uh, because my background was architectures, so I think I'm going to present from the perspective of design and architectures. Lah. Uh, so just to, to give uh, uh, a brief uh, introduction on how, how was the potential of bamboos actually in design yeah? uh, with its characteristic and everything. I think uh, for, for schools, especially for children, if we can start working on it, I think uh, if we can bring up the awareness, yeah, I think we can be a very sustainable country yeah, in the in, in the future yeah, by using of that. Uh, Prof K, can, can uh, you guys see my screen? Yes. Yes. Well, yeah. Okay. So uh, just to start, bamboo is an ancient plant. Yeah? It's not a new... Uh, Re 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 reinvent plants. It actually uh, grow long times ago. Yeah, it grow with our with our uh, traditional uh, communities. Yeah? But with the current development, it brings a modern promise. Yeah? Because uh, more and more design with the touch of bamboos. I'm going to show you a few after this. It it brings a uh, is new new image a new uh, perspective of design. Yeah? Uh, where, where uh, even from the simple design, when you put the bamboos there, it, it creates a different feelings. Yeah? Because when we talk about uh, design, the, the one of the most important part of the design is to create a feelings to the owners, to the person who actually experience the space inside that, like like this one. Yeah? If you're looking at this, this is a basically a simple space. Yeah, uh, well, but when you put it in the in uh, a bamboo elements there. It creates a different uh, environment. Yeah? You, you you can feel the the nature. You can feel the 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 apa, the surroundings uh, image of 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 uh, timbers there. Yeah, uh, like one part of it. Yeah? So bamboo architectures uh, become one of the innovative and sustainable designs. Yeah. Uh, why why is 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 that? we call sustainable as mentioned by uh Datuk before uh bamboo is sustainable resources so it, it was uh, uh it grows very fast yeah as i said one or two years you can harvest the things and it doesn't require uh much of uh cultivation i i, I farm in my house so it, <laughs> i know exactly how important to have uh to 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 to, to harvest things uh, very fast <laughs> not too much of your plant uh, take new things yeah? so compared to timbers yeah, some part of the timbers i think bamboo was among the fastest uh, grows yeah plant so that make it very uh, sustainable yeah so that you can harvest you can use it you can harvest you can use it so it's, it's easy to 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 go into uh, 
a more sustainable uh, living living style with these materials. Yeah. So when when looking at bamboo from the perspective of design and architectures, yeah, normally in architecture we have this strength to weight ratios. Yeah. So for example, when you you can uh, build different kind of buildings using different kind of materials. Yeah. For example, like our KLCCs, Kuala Lumpur, our KLCC was made by rain, reinforced concrete. Yeah. Of course, in the state or in Europe, so when you construct a high-rise building, you use uh, steel, yeah? <laughs> but steel is extremely expensive in Malaysia. <laughs> because I know, because I, I last time I proposed some design on steel, and it, 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 it was a very, very expensive. <laughs> So steel was not a good option in Malaysia, while reinforced concrete is there. But when you are using reinforced concrete, whether you like it or not, we have to bear the consequences. Yeah, the consequences that uh, the load of the building become very heavy. That's why the foundation of the building become very heavy also. Compared to bamboo, bamboo was very light material. So when you are using that element in your buildings, your building weight will, will be uh, very heavy. So it won't affect your foundation, it won't affect your your column and structures so that is one of the most efficient uh, materials yeah compared to to other materials uh natural flexibilities as mentioned by datu just now the bamboo was very flexible you yeah? know even when when it, it grows you can you can shape it yeah you can reshape it i know some some uh designs yeah i i, I saw some furniture some uh interior design some product design actually they reshape the bamboos and, and it's very flexible Another one is that this is very important. The durability of bamboo was was very high, <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe compared to others uh, materials like timbers, yeah? because it it produce what we call is oil. Yeah? The oils uh, actually when with, with the proper treatment, yeah? if you have a proper treatment uh, on the bamboo itself, uh, it would last uh, very long. <laughs> so so it was a, a chosen of good materials to. To, to more durable. Yeah? One of very important on the bamboo is the cultural significance. Yeah, when you when you uh, designing a building or you designing a product, normally the product can exist any part of the world, <laughs> any part of the world. I mean, like, that's what in, in architecture we call international style. Yeah, when you have international style, mean your buildings uh, with the one in Europe, the one in other part of China, so maybe in the other part of the United States. Maybe the same, yeah, because you use uh, reinforced concrete, you use bricks, yeah. Uh, but but when you use bamboos, the it brings a local uh, and cult and cultural significance, yeah. So it it is deeply rooted yeah, in, in in many cultures. So so when you know you see one of the, like, for example when I uh, visit Bali, yeah, I visit Bali many times. When I visit uh, Bali, you can see that oh that building belong to the spirit of the place, yeah, of that particular area yeah that was the the important of it uh in terms of modular approach yeah we have uh, in architecture we call it modular modular mean you we, we we put it as a module so that it can increase yeah it can increase uh, depending on our needs yeah uh, we we can have an efficient construction yeah it's very adaptable yeah i'm going to show you some sample at all uh, it and, and the most important thing is that it brings up the communities yeah because when 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 sometimes when you construct a buildings or structures, uh, the 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 technologies only can be done with certain machine, with only can be done with the certain uh, companies, yeah, uh, big companies, uh, contractors. But when you use bamboos, actually uh, you can with with the local wisdom, wisdom. Yeah, in Indonesia we have some a lot of local wisdom how to treat the bamboos and everything. Then from that, actually we can works together on on bridging the communities yeah uh, some innovative techniques in bamboo in architectures yeah uh, we can use as a bamboo domes yeah joints or maybe skyscrapers yeah in china i remember in 2017 they are able to to reach yeah uh, seven stories yeah the idea it goes up 20 stories <laughs> on the last development yeah okay when we talk about bamboo and environmental impact, impacts, I think this one has been explained also by Dato. Eh? The benefit is that it's sustainable, rapid renewable materials. We reduce the carbon footprints to the areas. And of course, we, we significantly reduce the greenhouse uh, gas emissions. I think this is the most important. Yeah? But of course, we have challenge, yeah, as mentioned by Dato. We, have, we need to 
build up the awareness. Yeah. Uh, we don't. We also need to have more treated bamboo that's safe and long lasting. I think um, proper treatment with proper liquids. Yeah, well, you put it in the proper waters, then you you can have a very long lasting one. Yeah. Another one is that there's a resisting yeah you know, uh, on using bamboo as primary building material. I think. I think what in Malaysia, what I saw is that sometimes some insurance company they don't want to to insure your house if using timber or bamboos. And I think that's one of the uh, things. But with proper research, when we show showing them that actually with the proper treatment of bamboos, uh, we can have more resistant uh, buildings. Yeah, that is uh, another homework I think for the researchers in the in this area. Yeah. Uh, just I think uh, bamboo was growing all across the globe. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially uh, except for the Antarctica and some part of Europe, so, which they are not growing. But other parts, I think they are they grow many anywhere. Yeah. Okay. So uh, just to to give a summarize of of of, of what bamboo's uh, 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 potential is in terms of economic benefit, in terms of cultural traditional significance, and also aesthetically appealing. See, I'm going to show you later some sample of it. Okay. Uh, give some samples. Yeah, this is a uh, Votrong's uh, architects, one of the architects in Vietnam who built uh, some design uh, using bamboo. Yeah, I'm going to show you a bit. This is a, a restaurant. Yeah, <laughs> a simple restaurant. If you're looking at the the plan of the restaurant, it's very easy. It's rectangular, <laughs> just a square rectangular uh, normal restaurant. But you can imagine when we put the bamboos inside that restaurant, the the impression, the space, and also the the, the image of the restaurant changed dramatically. Yeah? <laughs> if you can see here, yeah. uh, see the the if you see outside also, it, it creates a different feelings yeah? it, at night. Yeah? So uh, this is mainly contributed by bamboos <laughs> into a very simple space. Yeah? Yeah, you can see this is some detail. I, I then I don't think the bamboos was 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 uh, uh, complicatedly <laughs> treated yeah? in this in this situation. Yeah? Uh, another sample, yeah, wind and water restaurants. Also, same restaurants, a simple one. When you when you put in the element of bamboos there, uh, it it create a very a great feeling. Yeah, the feeling was was totally different. Yeah, of course you can you you can also talk about the the traditional uh, construction jointing systems. Yeah, uh, that 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 already apply in the communities. By using that, you we are basically conserving the the heritage yeah, of this construction methods yeah. you can see the the impression of the restaurant because of the bamboo structures there the spaces that it created was was dramatically changed yeah. uh, this is one sample of the pavilions yeah, the vietnam pavilions in the milan uh, 2015 yeah. you can see the difference this is another hotel yeah. uh, you see the, the the image is very natural it looks uh, down to earth and it it, it, it creates a very good great feelings yeah? it, it it doesn't uh contrast with the context if you see here we did a very uh natural context you can have a very nice setting and buildings there yeah you can see the details yeah? so so these all these things all the details uh, can be developed from our local craftsmanship uh skills yeah i think in 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 some part uh if we if we got time, I think uh, we can we can go to places like Bali or some area in Bandung. We can have some uh, meeting with some of the craftsmen who uh, who, who naturally works with this uh, uh, with these bamboo uh, structures. Yeah. Another example yeah, uh, by Ken Gokuma, also uh, uh, an architect who try to give uh, to develop the five cents. Yeah. You can see here it's a normal space, but when you put uh, uh, bamboo elements there. The feelings is is different yeah? uh, with this, like 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 uh, this uh, installation. If you're looking at this office, yeah, it's uh, it's like my it, it can be your house, it can be an office. But when you put the bamboo elements inside that office, it changes uh, dramatically. Yeah? The, the 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 image and also the the spaces. Yeah? The quality of space was up was was upgraded. Yeah, uh, uh, very high in, in this case. You can see here how it become uh, close with the nature. So I don't think that this this bamboo was was complicatedly <laughs> treated yeah, in this in this situation. Yeah. Of course, now bamboos become the replacement of the plastics. Yeah. 
and we also uh, like these toothbrush things yeah we also have called laminated bamboos actually uh, if you ask me i'm not prepared to use it because it it, it 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 doesn't have the real feeling of bamboos but in terms of strength in terms of flexibilities it is one of the top uh, uh, strongest materials yeah, in, in the construction in the building construction yeah. basically you, you chop off the, the bamboos and you will laminate it yeah, it will become a uh, laminated bamboos yeah. Yeah, something like this yeah. then you can have this kind of building yeah. uh, uh, with the image uh, with a modern image and very strong yeah I, I saw a uh, three stories buildings uh, built up by by uh, research centers in 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 in, in, in Bali when I visited in 2019 yeah so I saw how the the, the laminated bamboo can become the main column of the building meaning the main construction element of the building, not just a, a wall or not just not just a window yeah? so uh just to give you some examples of the designs yeah? in terms of furniture yeah? in, uh, so you can see that the chairs tables the walls yeah? uh, some uh, cupboards yeah? and then also all these uh, tables i think uh, prof cairo have produced uh, an excellent uh, works yeah? <laughs> when when if you have got time go visit upm yeah go to the galleries i think it's open until end of october if i'm not mistaken so you can have see some of his design uh, using the bamboo veneer and some element of bamboos there very interesting one yeah so like in flooring yeah uh, like i say eco friendly so kitchenware yeah you can have a, a cheap kitchenware who, who change the the image of the of your kitchen dramatically yeah by, by installing this uh, bamboo uh, bamboo elements there yeah, you can see here it changed yeah uh, from our modern uh, planes uh, kitchen now you you have a very nice uh, down to earth kitchens there yeah of course we also have uh, interior panels yeah you you see the how the flexibility it is uh, so you can have a uh, 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 walls yeah you can have the ceilings designed differently with this new material yeah? uh, you can this is some elements of it you can put it as a, 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 a wall wall uh, uh, dividers or maybe uh lines yeah? something like that and also no they're going for some consumer products like uh, glasses uh, laptop uh, stands yeah? so this all the the i think if, if you if you go to shopees we have a lot of, of of new products come from uh treated bamboos from there okay so in conclusion i, I hope i didn't exceed the time the, the application of will help to improve environmental quality yeah, it protects natural ecosystem reduce the demand for limited resources so so it's very important i think uh in malaysia context uh we have to go for 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 these materials yeah even though i know that the, the 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 bamboo material must, might not might not be as big as the one in indonesia might be but is a it has a very great potential yeah, so we promote ecological balance and carbon emission reduction so so by working together i think we we can i think it, it's time for us to go for interdisciplinary cooperation yeah i think uh, we have a forestry we have the design aspect architectures we have maybe from another aspect then we can we can basically grow it into a new uh, kind of material that helps the countries uh, to become more sustainable country in the future. Yeah. I think that's all for me, Prof. Cairo. Thank you very much for your time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Prof. Matula. It was very informative, you know, as a designer and architect. Yeah, I think they have shown uh, um, very important, uh, very important uh, point here, uh, which point is here, I can extract from his uh, presentation just uh, now. Uh, 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 using, using, I mean, bamboo I mean, as a sustainable yeah, building yeah, material. Building yeah. material. Yeah. So by using so that, we create the that, cultural the significance of the bamboo itself. The bamboo yeah? itself yeah. And and the use of bamboo also can create the modular, the modular approach, approach and which is efficient for construction, adaptability, and also bridging communities. And of course, because of the 
Bamboo the, is very Bamboo beautiful. Is very beautiful. You create the impressions of the building. Of the building. Ethically. Ethically. Yeah. Yeah. And create uh, a great uh, feeling dramatically. dramatically and natural. And natural. Okay. Okay, for for, okay, for the for audience, the if you have audience, any question, you, you can uh, write your question uh, in the chat box. The chat so, box. so we will respond it we will respond immediately or immediately maybe in the session the of question and answer. Right, our next right. speaker, our next we are speaker. very fortunate very to have, fortunate uh, to have uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Green or Mr. Matthias oh, Gelder. He's from Germany. From Germany. He was voted he was greenest voted person green on the planet in, in 2008. He has given talks in 42 countries internationally and five times at TED events. Matthias holds a master degree in environmental science from Brunel University, UK, 1994, and now lives happily, happy family life in Philippines. Between November 2019 and June 2022, he was the ESG advisor of Philippine Stock Exchange, and he has given hundreds of ESG and sustainability talks in Malaysia and beyond for companies and government. Matthias is an in inspirational speaker and currently the net zero brand ambassador of VTO Motors Malaysia, Advanced Wood Finland and Desert Board UAE. Without further ado, I would like to invite Mr. Matthias Gelber, the green man. Please, welcome. Yeah, um, I can't find his name on the list of participants okay. yet. All right. So, uh, in, in that case, we can proceed with your competition first. Is it possible? Okay, sure. Okay. Right. Let, let, let me uh, <laughs> give some introduction first. <laughs> sure. Yeah. All right. Our expedition doesn't stop here. Yeah. The heart of Endeavor lies in the Bamboo Idea Challenge. It's a call to action for all of you. We aim to cultivate a profound connection between Bamboo and education by inviting students to ambition, create, and own a future enriched by Bamboo present. The challenge is simple yet impactful. How can Bamboo weave its magic within the very fabric of your school environment. How can this remarkable plan become a catalyst for sustainable change in your life? Uh, with that note, I would like to invite Mr. Ramesh Pillai to announce the Bamboo Challenge competition. Please welcome Mr. Ramesh Pillai. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Hyrule, and uh, to the Malaysia Bamboo Society for this wonderful webinar. Um, this is actually the second time we are hosting it. Um, as Dato Mazalina mentioned, the first time was just before the um, what do you call the 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 COVID. In fact, it was during the COVID. I think we had the first one, and we also had a competition. So my role here today is to announce the competition. So just a quick flashback. Uh, about two years ago, the the competition was based on using bamboo skewers to come up with designs. Uh, more of um, a craft kind of a design, right? So this year, uh, we've got another challenge based on the very exciting information shared by our two uh, speakers earlier. Uh, we are going to come up uh, or, or rather we have already come up with some ideas for students to participate. So this is a school-based project. Now, let me try sharing with you the slides here. Yeah? I hope this works. Okay, good. I can see that the screen is up, yeah? All right. <clears throat> so based on the webinar today, uh, the theme of the webinar is Bamboo for Sustainable Living and Let's Adopt Bamboo in School. So in line with that theme, uh, together with the Malaysia Bamboo Society, 
V from STEM for All Maker Space, uh, it, with the support of Maranti Makers Lab, Lab is actually uh, coming up with this idea uh, to run a competition for ideas for bamboo in my school. Right. So I think with the information shared by uh, Dr. Mazalina and uh, uh, Professor Dr. Nangula, uh, Nangula, we think that there's a lot of valuable information or tips that can be incorporated in their projects for this idea challenge. So what is this idea uh, all about or this idea challenge? So the Bamboo Idea Challenge uh, is has got the following two objectives. One is to encourage bamboo programs in school through activities such as planting bamboo, craft making, etc. So we heard a lot of uh, valuable or um, great properties that bamboo has, you know, in terms of sustainability, in terms of strength, in terms of um, um, giving a higher level of oxygen. So therefore, we think that it will be great to explore uh, some of the use of bamboo uh, for this purpose. Dr. Mazalina has mentioned a school in Kuala Kangsa that has successfully adapted bamboo. And I think today they're reaping the uh, benefits of uh, seeing so much of greenery, you know, and uh, in particular bamboo, how it adds to the um, uh, quality of the air within the school. So that's the objective number one. And objective number two is to encourage students to come up with ideas on bamboo to complement the SDGs. So we believe very strongly that uh, this has got, you know, bamboo is a very sustainable material and it meets a lot of the uh, SDGs uh, criteria or agenda. Therefore, this is the objective of the Bamboo Idea Challenge. Uh, moving on, so this is what uh, we have come up with three specific categories. That means there will be prizes to be given in these three categories. So category number one will be uh, bamboo in schools for infrastructure, okay, the use of uh, ideas incorporating bamboo in the physical infrastructure of their schools. Uh, this could be the designing of bamboo furniture, creating bamboo-based structures such as shelters or pagolas, uh, or suggesting bamboo flooring. So anything that can enhance the school's um, uh, use of bamboo, all right? So that is infrastructure will be the main theme. Second will be landscaping or the proper term that use, I think, is a bamboo system, which is like a nursery. If any school have got resources, space, and they want to explore this, then the school can actually um, get the students to, participate, uh, to, to join in this particular category or submit ideas in this particular category, uh, whereby they can uh, think about how bamboo's potential in enhancing outdoor spaces within the, uh, within the schools, okay? So come up with uh, using bamboo to create that shaded areas, outdoor sitting, decorative elements. So uh, this is outdoors. Okay, so the first the first category is mainly infrastructure, which is could be indoors. Second will be outdoor. And the third category is uh, art and design and craft. I think this is also Prof Hyrule's uh, expertise. Uh, he has created some very fantastic designs, furniture design. So as a point of inspiration and as also mentioned by Dr. Mazalina, I think some visits. So schools that are serious, we will be very pleased. We meaning um, Malaysia Bamboo Society together with STEM for All Maker Space, we can actually organize some field trips to see uh, UPM, for example. Prof. Hyrule is still in UPM. Uh, I visited him and I was really blown away with the ideas that they have there. I think our students have to be exposed to this. So uh, I see that Ivan is here. Ivan is actually one of our very strong participants from Sri Mas International School. And we have actually organized field trips. And uh, he has, uh, you know, uh, sub, um, um, encouraged his students to join some of the field trips. So I'm sharing this because I think in order for students to be inspired, they have to see for themselves. All right. And uh, so this third category on art design, um, I would, uh, you know, um, single out uh, Dr. Hyrule as one of the point of inspiration. Yeah? So we, we can actually help to bring the students to such places and for them to be exposed and then go back to their school, sit together and design uh, ideas, you know, for this uh, Bamboo Idea Challenge in these three particular categories. Of course, uh, you know, to incentivize them, so we've got prizes. So as mentioned, there are three very specific categories. 
uh, bamboo in school, I mean, uh, bamboo in school infrastructure, uh, landscaping, and art and design. So these are the three categories. And the prizes now, together with our partners, uh, we will raise some funds to give away as prizes. So for each of the category, the overall price is 600 ringgit. Okay. And then we'll have three. That means one main prize and three special prizes. We mentioned special prizes. That means it doesn't have to be uh, first, second, third. So that means all will receive 300. Why? Because we'll have very specific categories. Like say, for example, the most creative use. All right, uh, we'll get a special price. Uh, the most sustainable, uh, we'll get another uh, price, you know, or the most, uh, the strongest structure, for instance, you know. So those are the things that the panel of judges will later decide. But for our participants, all you have to know is that the grand prize will be 600, plus there's another opportunity of winning three um, uh, in each of the category, you know, there'll be three special prize worth of 300 ringgit. Now, uh, the cash prizes may not be very much, but let me assure you the exposure is great. You know why? Because this shortlisted entries will be brought to a special platform uh, in conjunction with the Maker Fest, Maranti Maker Fest. Okay, uh, I'll come to that in a short while, but before that, let me say that all participants will receive a certificate of participation from the Malaysia Bamboo Society. All right, so this is something to incentivize. That means it's good that uh, students who participate, we will recognize, so we'll recognize and we will issue a certificate of participation by the Malaysian Bamboo Society. Okay, right. So basically, that's that's the main thing that I want to announce. Okay, so to 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 incentivize, we have prizes, but more importantly, a platform for you to showcase in conjunction with the Maker Fest. Uh, and further to it, of course, the installation of this. I hope the schools will be encouraged uh, and uh, will then be able to come up with this idea. The first stage is, of course, a prototype. We, we you know, you can come up with the design uh, through PowerPoint presentations. Um, you can actually, um, what you call, then fabricate it. Okay, of course, the cost of fabrication, if the idea is great, I'm sure there'll be a lot of organizations that are willing to support and to to, to fabricate that particular idea. I just saw a, a question that popped up. It says that, is this open to Sabah and Sarawak? Yes, indeed, very much. It's a nationwide uh, because the first phase is just submit online. Okay, submit your ideas either in, I, I give you the criteria uh, for submission. Uh, <clears throat> let me move on to the uh, last, um, last slide. So the mechanics, you know. This again, we will post it in our websites. We will share it in our uh, links so that more schools um, will be able to participate, even though they were not able to join the webinar today. We believe that lots of schools are quite excited about this opportunity. Okay, so to answer the question is now, yes, any school can participate in Malaysia. And here are some of the criteria. Eligibility is open to uh, students 13 to 18, meaning we want to um, encourage the secondary school students. Group participation, three to five students per group. Uh, duration, we have got six weeks. That means from today, you know. So in fact, seven weeks. So what we decided is that the closing date for this competition will be on the 21st of October. All right, so upon closing, then we will quickly do an evaluation led by Dr. Marcelina. And of course, uh, Dr. Hyru, Professor Hyru, with his vast experience, will be helping us to lead uh, the evaluation. And within a week, we'll be able to shortlist and inform the schools. The only thing is that the schools have been shortlisted, then they have to fund their own um, uh, travel and uh, uh, expenditure to come to make a space, should they want to display, should they want to you know, come, or otherwise we will still be able to evaluate and uh, do something about that. So that will be the uh, timelines. Uh, submission, as mentioned, so the first stage is just illustration pictures or animated graphics or uh, even models we, we welcome, you know, so if you if any of the schools want to create their own models prototype, yes, you can create that, do a simple video and submit it online. Right? So that is how the submissions is going to be done. Uh, moving on, the judging criteria will be based on the factors such as creativity, feasibility, sustainability, impact. Uh, quality of presentation. So all this criteria we will also be sharing with you in our uh, websites. 
and uh, judges. Okay, I think all those are quite straightforward. Um, announcement of winners to be announced and notified. And uh, you know, we will definitely, as I mentioned, the timelines will be immediately after the closing date. Within a week or two, we will shortlist 10 best entries and we'll invite these 10 best entries to Maker Fest, uh, which is actually on the 25th and 26th of November at Maranti Park. Uh, last year, we had the presence of Bamboo, Malaysia Bamboo Society, and I think this year we will definitely continue to have the presence of Malaysia Bamboo Society along with this uh, great ideas from the schools. All right. Um, so point number 10, recognition and presentation, as mentioned, will be done in conjunction with the Maker Fest. And finally, the support and guidance, you know. So here, I think the Malaysia Bamboo Society will be very pleased to support you in giving more reference uh, feel free. I noticed that uh, the, the the link to the Malaysia Bamboo Society was also shared. So those who are interested to know about the Bamboo Society or to get some advice from experts such as Dr. Mazalina and our distinguished speakers, please do uh, write in or just text them the message and we will be able to help you come up with lovely ideas that uh, you know will promote or uh, take the bamboo to the next level so the future of the uh, 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 bamboo lies with the uh, youngsters today and as the team suggests uh, melento bulo uh, biarlah uh, rebong uh, masa rebong so while you're still young it's very easy for us to mold you to appreciate the beauty of bamboo all right, so with that, I would like to thank everyone for watching, um, for joining our webinar today and uh, wishing you all the very best in the Bamboo Idea Challenge. And um, as mentioned, um, you can get further information. What I shared will also be placed in our link for the competition. So before you enter the competition, just go in and you'll be able to read up. Uh, in fact, even the videos, I can share the link in the video. Right. So once we upload this video uh, into our what do you call YouTube channel, I will just share share that in our Google form. Right. So uh, with that, I would like to thank again Dr. Mazilina, President of the Malaysia Bamboo Society, Dr. Hyro for hosting this wonderful session, and our distinguished speakers. Uh, back to you, Dr. Hyro. Thank you very much, Mr. Ramesh. The explanation is very clear on bamboo challenge. Okay, please, all the school teachers, please take note on this. The grand prize is 600 ringgit, and also a, a special prizes worth 300 ringgit. And you get also a certificate of participation. Yeah, I think this is a recognition from Malaysia Bamboo Society, which is very very exclusive for this particular uh, competition. Well, now we we move on to the third speaker, yeah, which uh, Mr. Matthias Gelber or the Mr. Greenman. Are you here? Yes, I'm oh, here. Yes. Good yes. morning. Thank you. Don't worry, I'm here. Orang Hijau <laughs> is here. All right, I already. I already, uh, I already uh, read your bio data, so I don't want to repeat it again. So uh, I think without further ado, please, Mr. Mr. Matthias, welcome, and you can proceed with your presentation. Yes, all right. Good morning to all of you, and greetings from the Philippines. I'm based in the Philippines now. I lived a long time in uh, Malaysia. So my Malaysia motto when I used to live there was Sikit Sikit Lama Lama Jadi Bukit, right? That is what I learned from a taxi driver in Malaysia. The taxi driver asked me, hey, what do you do? A uh, 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 foreign uh, matsale here, what do you do in Malaysia? And uh, I said, oh, I'm not having a job. I was in Malaysia, my second home. But I try to help people go green. Then he said to me, oh, that was 2004. He said to me, Malaysia difficult, no money, no talk. So, and then I spoke with him, I explained to him. And then he said to me at the end, you know what you're trying to do is sikit sikit, lama lama jadi bukit, like little by little, more and more, 
we can grow the mountain, we can basically, you know, kind of uh, get ourselves organized in such a way that uh, we can make a difference, especially if we all work together, we can make a huge, big difference. So this is really what we want to do. And now I will uh, find my slides, hopefully, and then share them with you guys. Um, I need to uh, check here on the um, Chrome. How does this work? Because I'm more familiar with the um, the. Um, hmm. Now I have the wrong file here. Never mind. If I can't find it, then I will give a talk without any slides. Because usually I prefer giving a talk without any slides. Uh, and that is what I normally do. So maybe what I don't know whether this is possible, but can can you guys give me the full screen so that people can actually see me properly rather than just a small window? Then I think it's more effective uh, for a presentation without slides. Um, you have already seen loads of example of bamboo architecture. You've seen already loads of examples of bamboo items that can be made. Now, do we have mainly students here or is it mainly supervisors from different uh, schools? I get the impression it's mainly the supervisors from different schools, right? Can you guys uh, send in the comments where you are actually coming from, which schools? So I have a little bit of an understanding what audience we have today. If we have mainly supervisors rather than the students, then I think the main goal will be to actually get you guys motivated, how you guys can actually get the students motivated to be part of this. And the key is always to find a reason. Why should the students do it? Yes, we've already heard uh, earlier on from the excellent presentation from Mr. Ramesh, there is a cash price in there. But our reason must be a bigger reason, right? It must be something really motivating us. And when I think about bamboo, I love bamboo because bamboo is one of the most amazing material. It grows so fast, it needs very little water, and you harvest it, and wow, it grows uh, from itself. There's Mr. Miss Jennifer from UCSI. Uh, I, I remember giving a talk as well to UCSI before, even in uh, I visited your campus in Kuching because I was giving a talk there in Kuching about Go Green. Now, here I have my toothbrush bought in Germany, and it says this toothbrush is made from 100% biodegradable, sustainably grown Moso bamboo. Yeah, we have teachers and supervisors here. Moso bamboo. This species of bamboo is the fastest growing plant on earth. It can grow up to 30 centimeters in one day. Moso bamboo is grown naturally without fertilizers and pesticides. It's also panda friendly. And they call this bamboo toothbrush a vegan toothbrush. Because there's obviously no animal related content in it. And there is Ivan as well principle of Sri Imas. Great to see uh, you here. And Sri Imas, I know you guys are going to pump up the students to really participate in it. But bamboo is not just a gimmick. You know, most people, when they think about bamboo, they think about, oh, yeah, in the old days, people used to do housing from bamboo. I actually just bought a house here in the Philippines. And the next thing that we're going to do, the house extension, will be bamboo. Like. Most people here think, oh, bamboo, uh, that's what people used to do 100 years ago or 50 years ago. But bamboo can be the future if we all work together on it. And bamboo is already seen as one of the main solution to the climate challenge. You know, here in Germany, this is the most famous retail brand, Aldi. They are selling the bamboo truth brushes in Germany because they think this is one of the most sustainable, biodegradable carbon sink toothbrush. If you have bamboo, you sequester loads of carbon. If you have cement, 
you have a carbon and climate problem because when we make cement, we are burning limestone. Limestone is calcium carbonate, CaCO3. We are releasing the carbon that Mother Nature captured in the beautiful white limestone hills in Ipo. What do you do when you make cement? You are chopping down the limestone hills. You're crushing them and you're burning them at 1,400 Celsius to release the CO2. Bamboo does the opposite. It sequesters the carbon from the photosynthesis, locks in the carbon. And if we then modify the bamboo in such a way that it is durable, then we have the most beautiful carbon sink homes and building material that we can imagine. There's actually a mega trend in the US and in Europe, which is called mass timber. There are not so many bamboo plantations at scale in Europe. So they're cutting down 60 or 70 years old pine trees and turning it into building material because when we use bamboo biomass, we get a carbon sink. When we use steel and concrete, we get a high CO2 emission. So the world is starting to decide on what building material to use based on the carbon footprint. Even Singapore built a four story, 150 million US dollar mass timber building. They brought all the components in from Europe. Biomass is the future of construction. Bamboo is actually the best solution. There is a factory already here in the Philippines, in Mindanao, that is making bamboo panels for structural, for glue lamp, for house construction. They originally wanted to export to US, but they have so much demand here in the Philippines already, they cannot even supply the glue lamp uh, to the market here in the Philippines that is required. They want to expand to several other factories. I spoke with a Malaysian factory recently from Johor Bahru that makes glue lamp from uh, Meranti. And they told me as well that they have more demand than they can supply because people want to build buildings from carbon sink building materials. And I think bamboo is the best solution. So at the moment, we are thinking about bamboo as the little gadgets that we use here and there. But I think you can tell your students, bamboo might be the new concrete of the future construction. Because we cannot achieve the Paris climate goals if we continue to stick with cement and steel. Bamboo has the ability for both structural replacing steel and for walls and floors to replace cement. We just need to make it happen at scale. Here in the Philippines, one of the things that's super popular is the BAM bike. These are bicycles out of bamboo. Okay, they are still quite expensive. They look great. But again, it's a question of scale. We need to scale up our bamboo solution to such a level that they become affordable for mass utilization. I already have bamboo underwear, but I cannot show that to you today. I have as well bamboo clothes. Today I'm wearing my linen uh, shirt bought in Malaysia. Natural materials, natural solutions. That's going to be the big business of the future. So when you're trying to sell these ideas to your students, I think it's fair to say this is going to be a billion dollar, billion ringgit, billion euro industry in the future. When we talk bamboo, we are not just talking gadgets here and there for niche market. We are talking about opportunities for new entrepreneurs. And I know Sri Imas, for example, and I'm sure some of the other schools here, you're trying to as well instill in your students the entrepreneur mindset. 
the bamboo economy for building materials for other items for we already know bamboo makes great musical instruments but even clothes any items we need to replace plastic again bamboo can be one of the materials that should be the carbon sink biodegradable solution for the future so when we think about sikit sikit lama lama jadi bukit it is the impact that we want to turn into a great mountain but as well the money that students will be able to make in 10 20 years if they become bamboo entrepreneurs will be big money because the market is shifting this way it might start off with a 300 ringgit or 600 ringgit cash price which is a good motivation for the students where they are now but it can go very very far because it's an open field very few people are doing it have done it but the demand is already increasing why did singapore invest so much money into a carbon sink non-young technical university four-story building because they want to turn singapore as a city into a carbon sink other countries will follow just this week the prime minister launched the energy transition strategy for malaysia at a conference at klcc hosted by tnb malaysia is setting targets for net zero all the built environment if it is to go net zero will need to use nature-based solutions bio-based building materials can we chop down all of the forest? No. We need sustainable replantation and we need bamboo and bamboo solutions and composites as the key building material of the future. This is where there will be gigantic opportunities. So it's not just sikit sikit lama lama jadi bukit in terms of us sequestering loads of carbon it will be as well a gigantic bucket of business opportunities in the future for bamboo solutions so if the students come up with innovations today this might be a solid fast growing business opportunity for the near future that is where we are heading the money that is being spent on green tech net zero decarbonization entrepreneurship is in the billions of US dollars. There is funding around. Kazana and other Malaysian based investment funds are looking for impact businesses, ESG businesses. All of this is where the market is going. I was joining this call late because I had a call this morning with an ESG fund from Singapore that's looking at putting 100 million US dollar into impact sustainable housing into the Philippines. Those funds are looking for social benefit and they are looking for environmental benefit. Bamboo ticks all those boxes. We heard earlier on about the cultural significance of bamboo. Bamboo has it all. That is why, even though we might be doing some small scale projects at the moment the future for bamboo is amazing that's why we have to thank the malaysian bamboo society uh dr maslina dr kairul and all the other people that are involved for preparing us for a big future and you guys the teachers and the supervisors in the school you can plant the seeds that might give your students the opportunity for unicorn entrepreneurial future opportunities the future is bright the book is going to be big and whatever you do whether it is you know small simple solutions for the household clothing structures in the school 
new designs i went last month to a school here in the philippines that was completely built from bamboo it's a french organization they are training uh underprivileged communities in entrepreneurial skills even their water pipes in the restrooms are made from bamboo so it can all be done and particularly the construction sector will be a gigantic bamboo opportunity if you build some structures in your schools that might be the seed that will encourage your students later on to turn this into a scalable business opportunity so that is my message from the philippines this transition is happening already bamboo is becoming a serious contender either as the conventional bamboo uh, material without it being chopped into small pieces uh, that are then glued together it can either be as the raw bamboo modified for durability or it can be uh, turned at an industrial scale into glue lamp type uh, structural building material that can even be used in large scale projects the opportunities are unlimited the time to get the students involved is now and i think you will be proud in 10 20 years time when those people that have been those students that have been inspired today might appear as the next uh, successful unicorn entrepreneurs coming out of malaysia or other countries in the region the land is there in malaysia the experience is there with growing bamboo we just need to turn it into viable end products to cater for the demands out there and these demands particularly in construction will be very very huge cement is currently the second most used material in the world after water and a lot of that cement we need to replace with bamboo or sustainably planted wood otherwise we will not meet the climate targets from the paris agreement so my message is please inspire your students the future is bright and if we go about it in the right way in the philosophy of sikit sikit lama lama jadi bukit we can get a great bucket of carbon sequestration and a great bucket of future opportunities for your students by following the bamboo opportunity path. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mattes. It was very enlightening and insightful of your presentation. Thank you very much. If I can extract from your, your presentation just now, Sikit sikit lama lama jadi bukit, and that bukit is very huge. The opportunity is there. There's a future material and billions of business opportunity. So we take note on that. Especially, we have to build up our new generation to realize this particular material bamboo has a very bright future all right now we we will open for question and answer yeah if, so some of the question is already in the in the chat um, but i also would like to maybe repeat yeah uh, the question yeah probably the first question to datuk mazalina how the participant or any of the public uh, would like to join uh, Malaysia Bamboo Society. Okay, um, I did uh, fill up the the answer, and and uh, I was just contact our uh, secretary Yanti, Miss Yanti, to uh, and she already shared the QR code 
that much easier that you can fill up the the, the joining fee is only p fifty ringgit and the um, fee for the whole year is all, also fifty ringgit. For the first time you pay hundred, but the continuing uh, continual annual fee will be only fifty ringgit. So it's very cheap, and and uh, people can. Uh, uh, everybody are welcome to join, even students, uh, teachers, uh, you know, we have a lo long range of, uh, and, and majority of our uh, participants are uh, the, ex the, the bamboo uh, passion people, you know, they, they're really into it. You can also email Yanti, she just forward the chat now, uh, or malaysianbamboosociety at gmail.com. That's how to become uh, MBS member. All right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So um, for the next question from Dr. Madalina, also, you know, uh, you have mentioned a lot of activities in what you have did in 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 Para. Perhaps, uh, what are the main issue that you face and how to uh, come over it yeah uh, okay. when you're organizing this particular program in the school so perhaps some of the school teacher can can look into these uh, issues and probably we have a more uh, smooth process in implant, implementing some activities at school please That's thank you very. yeah uh the, the project is on bamboo system and uh, Sekolah Kebangsaan Clifford uh, in Kuala Kansa managed to get it because they have, uh, we have alumni uh, as OCA, uh, Old Cliffordian uh, Association that uh, find the funding and also uh, match the funding together with Yayasan uh, Amal Tenaga, we managed to secure from them. MBS also contribute a bit. So, uh, all in all, uh, the much the challenge are actually to get the species. Uh, when they aim for twenty species, we end up to get thirty. It was not easy to run around the country and to secure the species by calling um, the owners or the the the. Uh, uh, nursery owner, whether they have the species. If they don't have, we have to go into the forest and, and collect them. Just beat a bit, one or two uh, clubs, and we bring back. And that is the costly and effortly. So you have to know what you're collecting. Second is to plant them is quite easy, but this you need to uh, CV culture or look after the young uh, bamboo babies before they can plant direct or the direct sun. So you have to know the step by step in order to ensure they are survived. Uh, we did this within six months, everything survived, everything good. So in order to get people to uh, visit this place, we also provide the uh, artificial uh, grass uh, cover and that becomes the uh, 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 okay, dribble it. So the kids are using it and, and prepare it and the kids also get that involved. So they feel they are on the ownership of the project. And to get the teachers participate is, is uh, kind of tough also because uh, teachers are wanting to do everything within their, when they are in the school. So anything outside the, the time of uh, working, uh, we have to encourage them uh, and talk to the parents and go for the weekends and these are the things that because I have to travel up, uh, you know, to to ensure this is done and every time I'm there, I will give a talk, a simple talk to the student to encourage them and to the teachers how to involve in making the space uh, beautiful and uh, encouraging. And now people are coming, visiting the place and soon it will become one of the icon for tourism. That I'm happy about that. That's all. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Madalina. Well, we have uh, one question from uh, Jonity Philip from Sabah. The question addressed to Mr. Matthias. Uh, he asked you, uh, Mr. Matthias, have you been to Sabah? <laughs> and how we can reach the market for the bamboo products such as charcoal? So this question to uh, Mr. Matthias. 
please welcome yeah for me uh i i think uh, uh saba yes i've been in saba i uh had one holiday there in my early days and then i went uh, to have a trip up the um famous river to see the big four in saba including the pygmy elephants and that was amazing and i went to uh, uh sandakan and sipilok so i love saba it's a great place and um i think for me you know a uh, bamboo is even more valuable than charcoal i mean charcoal is one low margin business but i think we need to start looking at bamboo as a, a scalable building material that can replace cement and steel with higher value applications and uh, this american factory in mindanao is doing it already they are basically um manufacturing cladding for house walls and they are manufacturing glue lamp glue lamp is basically structural components for your uh, um, buildings where you don't have the the round bamboo but you basically have the uh, uh, bamboo uh, stripes that are then compressed and glued together to big beams and these beams even fulfill structural uh, uh, components and i know that glue lamp beams at this point in time you can sell uh, one cubic meter of glue lamp beams that has uh, been certified as a structurally fit material you can sell it for 1500 us dollars a cubic meter so there's a lot of money in those high value products but you need to obviously have a processing whereas you know one cubic meter or, or one ton of uh, glue lamp if you turn it into charcoal uh, and you have one of ton of charcoal you don't get that much money for it obviously so um i think uh, other applications as well that you know the the bam bike for example here in the philippines is seen as a high end bicycle it's sold nearly twice the price of conventional bicycles but still people buy it because it has the following as this unique iconic uh, eco friendly bike so um, i think you know you should look at saba as a as an opportunity for a uh, building material production that goes to singaporean market philippines market malaysian market where developers are increasingly looking for uh, um, carbon sink building material and bamboo is perfect for that i can maybe put you in touch as well with the american guys in uh, the philippines and see whether they want to set up a factory in uh, sabah as well why not but maybe there is the malaysian capability within the uh, uh, bamboo association to develop those products as well i'm not familiar whether this has been done at scale already in malaysia but uh, this is happening the demand is there the time is now to scale this all right thank you this is for glue lamp yeah thank that you. is what, what the guys in mindanao are doing and this is bamboo that's already uh, been planted before so i don't know exactly the species that they are using but they are doing it in mindanao all right thank you mr matthias so uh, there's one question from zachary uh, to prof dr nakula what are some of the structural challenges in constructing high uh, high rise large building such as a condominium or shopping mall or soho entirely from bamboo please uh prof nakula okay a very good question <laughs> uh, when when it was asked by uh, your son jennifer well, he was a uh, uh, very well thinking about it <laughs> okay uh, basically uh, in 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 in, uh, in in the building uh, designs uh, when we calculate the structure, we make the model first. Yeah, we make the models and we 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 test the models before we build up the original full scale uh, buildings. Yeah, that is the the key elements lah. So when 
when we as an architect or structural engineers before we build up something we test it in the labs so it was uh, somehow safer yeah so, so we don't put a risk and proper risk into the design yeah so uh, what are the challenges yeah so number one is that uh, the treatment of the bamboos uh, as mr matria say if we, you talk about glue laminated bamboos that one was very strong yeah uh, the one that i saw in the, it is can easily go to two or three story uh, buildings yeah because it's extremely strong and one another point is that uh, if it is uh, if what the what, what make it strong is that it was uh, in, in in some part uh, of the world the strain strong was really strong <laughs> i mean uh, even during the earthquakes yeah if you have uh, you have uh, earthquake issues in your countries malaysia don't have that uh, uh, luckily Malaysia don't have the earthquake issues so in indonesia you have in philippines also they have so if you have those earthquake problems uh, timber and bamboos might be a better solutions compared to reinforced concrete or even steel yeah in some some cases yeah so uh, if you ask me the challenges is that how to preserve the bamboos that is the the the, the the most challenging part lah. because uh, when you cut it cut the bamboos uh, uh, you cut the piece of bamboos it was not even eh? it's not like a timber the timber you you can treat it as a one uh, uh, one uh, element and then it was uh, the same yeah? from 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 the hulu to hilia <laughs> it's basically the same from the pangkal of the top is basically the same but when 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 you uh, take the bamboos it's all different that's why they they make it laminated bamboos. The one of the reason why they made it that because they want to have this this even evenly uh, uh, cut uh, evenly uh, uh, treated uh, element, yeah, so that they can have the distributed the load into the uh, the same ways. You, know, so you can you can easily uh, manufacture and 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 use it, yeah, use it in your design. Uh, but but in in my opinion in my opinion when we talk about bamboo designs uh i, I prefer to to use it the, the the original one yeah because when you you saw the bamboo in this original form like the one i show so you the Votrong's uh design yeah you can feel the 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 the, the, that the, building, the building was made from bamboos yeah compared than when you use glue laminated uh laminated bamboos so but uh, of course you have a limitations yeah, of uh, when you want to make it stronger you want to have it more durable yeah, that was the the the, the, the challenge lah. but in my opinion as long as based on my experience like, as long as it, it works in the labs it shouldn't have any issues when you design it in the full scale yeah so you can do it in the scale models test it in the in the in the, in the laboratoriums then you can have you can have it in the full scale design so there should be any issues lah. For, for 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 the things and and another thing is that uh bamboos uh, is easily to to transport yeah compared to like concrete or steel because they are lots heavier yeah than the bamboo so I mean the bamboo is a lot lighter than compared to others uh material so in terms of challenges I don't think uh lots of challenges on that yeah but but of course if you if you want to go higher yeah it require more uh experiment experiment yeah in the labs yeah um, you want to go higher level that that what where the the engineering the structure engineers come in yeah i think i i, I just answer it directly on the green schools yeah uh i think i visited the green school may uh, i think three times yeah uh even those uh structurally they they they, they put some concrete in the in the bamboos <laughs> to make it stronger yeah <laughs> there, there's a there's a there's a cheat trick there, <laughs> so I, I told the 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 the, the upper one of the principal there that oh you you do cheating lah. They know because we are not the one who built it. So basically, the bamboos uh, green school in Indonesia was was open up for international students yeah? all over the world. They can join, but the experience, yeah? the experience of sustainable experience when you are studying there, you are in that at a particular space. Yeah, I think that is the one that that very valuable. Yeah. For the students yeah so so you can experience how living sustainably <laughs> yeah so you live you live a sustainable life so i think that one will be a good experience for the uh, students i think that, that that's all my 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 answer uh, prof cairo all right yeah. okay thank you yeah maybe I, yeah maybe i can chip in as well one or two points here um 
obviously the um, structural replacement of steel, as uh, Professor Nankula mentioned, uh, you need to use laminate. Uh, but these American guys in Mindanao, I'll, I'll, I'll send you their website, you can uh, check them out. They basically say, this is the miracle building material that we've been waiting for. And they are pitching it directly as a steel replacement for high rise. Obviously, then you need to meet certain specifications. The reason why the mass timber project in Singapore used the uh, uh, flooring and uh, mass timber components from Europe is because Singapore uses the Euro cold building uh, uh, um, uh, system. So if they bring stuff in from Europe, it's already been certified against Euro code, so they can start uh, uh, doing it immediately. If you bring in a new building material from Malaysia or, or Philippines, apply it in Singapore, it will first have to comply with the Euro code requirements. And that can be very expensive to do the certification, the testing. The key issues that you will hear from architects is, oh, what happens with fire? Because their assumption is anything with wood or bamboo will burn. But the tests, especially for mass timber projects, have shown that actually if you have a, a bio-based column that's laminated like glue lamp style, the performance in a fire is better than steel. Because at a certain temperature, steel just collapses. It melts. Whereas the bio-based material charcoals on the outside and then it stops burning through. So it has a superior performance in a fire incident than the conventional steel structure. That has been shown in quite several tests. You can easily Google that. But when you look at those uh, uh, glue lamp materials, you need to test modulus of rupture, modulus of elasticity, and you have certain structural specifications that you need to meet once you meet those high specifications then you could charge a lot of money for the material so if you use laminates that uh, have durability and fulfill those specifications like for example uh, in australia they do a lot of uh, wood-based uh, construction but they have now the big trees, they mainly have small trees, they have lower and lower structural specs that these small trees meet. So there is definitely a huge market there. And particularly in Saba, it's sad to hear that the people have been just chopping it down uh, and converting it to palm oil plantations. They obviously think they can make a lot more money with palm oil plantations. But, uh, you know, uh, we need to start scaling up those commercial uh, end uses of bamboo so that people start appreciating it and scale up the planting of bamboo. All right. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a good information. Yeah. Right. In more technical. Yeah. So now I I have a question, how to nurture the love of bamboo to the public? So maybe some experience from uh, uh, Indonesia, of Nakula, and later from uh, um, Mr. Matthias. Uh, yeah. yeah. Oh, a very, very good question, <laughs> Professor Cairo. <laughs> Actually, we're still working on it, like Malaysia, uh, but uh, we have a local communities yeah, that, that use that uh, materials yeah we have uh i remember when i was uh, uh working as, a, as an architect in jakarta for, for constructing uh like we call it wakaf in malaysia yeah, when we call they're constructing a wakaf they have uh, this uh five by five or be three by three meters uh uh pondo yeah? we call it pondo uh, small small structures yeah so so uh uh, when we but when we work on it uh, they are still uh, traditional uh, builders yeah? tukang eh? they call it tukang that they, they're still uh, uh, familiar with that uh, uh, buildings uh, that that construction methods in indonesia in bali also we have some 
become uh, local people who are very very uh, experienced uh, using that that things. So uh, when as as I think the 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 apa the the ways in the in this apa event is going to the right direction. We start with the school children lah. So when the school children they try they can understand the the things. No, the the the, the older generation no they can understand it more. Yeah. So so. I think uh, it started with 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 the school kids with the program as as you have done it. I think it's tram is very good. It's a good start. Then 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 after looking at it in the schools, then then it goes into the more uh, uh, public public um, awareness on that. Yeah. So, so it doesn't start with the professional people. <laughs> yeah. So so sometimes uh, like an architects or or designers, they 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 see it uh, in. in Not as a professional, but as a somebody who actually works with the communities. Yeah, uh, that's what I what I experience lah. But I don't know. Maybe in other in other parts of the of the Indonesia, they work it differently. Maybe from the professional uh, perspective. But from from based on my experience, it's always start from the local communities. Yeah, go with the children, schools, and all goes to the uh, publics on on this awareness. I think that's my experience lah. Yeah. Appropriate. All right. Thank you. How about um, Mr. Matias? Do you explain in Philippines or other part of the world? I I think you know the key is individual champions. For example, the bamboo uh, uh, a trend with bikes here in the Philippines. It's an American Filipino that is championing it and that is promoting it, and that has created the brand, the Bam Bike. So I think that is uh, uh, very, very important. Or as uh, uh, Prof Nankula already indicated, if you look at Bali, what are the most expensive, the most desired Airbnb places that you can rent in Balu? Bali? They are the bamboo places. You know, the matsala pay maybe 500 euro to spend one night in the bamboo home. And you know, when I will build here in the Philippines the bamboo extension to our house, I'm sure the local people will think, "Well, this matsala is doing the bamboo. How come? Well, it must be very good." So it's individual champions, and we have to make it visible to other people. And maybe then we will rent out the bamboo place here as well as an Airbnb. And make big money from it, isn't that amazing? Those Airbnbs with the bamboo building and design are the most expensive in some places. We humans want to be connected with nature, so I think we need as well government support. We need the support of bamboo societies, but maybe the best way to promote the love for bamboo. Is to make it work as a money maker. Once you can make a lot of money from it, then people will jump into it and scale it up. Right. Yeah, yeah. All about money. Yeah. That's why money. What to do lah? <laughs> so it's also money. Simpan sikit sikit lama lama jadi bukit. You keep your money little bit and become a mountain. Yeah, right. So, how about uh, Datuk Mazalina in Malaysia? Probably, mm. what are some activities that we right. already done for this? We, we, uh, uh, as an MBS, uh, our members are active when they see projects. That's that's for sure. Uh, they, 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 you know, they, they, they promote themselves. You know, they, they have, they become like an influencer too over here. But when you deal with students, you have to go through the school, and and uh, there are mythos like saying bamboo is itchy, miang. You know, bamboo uh, is a house for snakes. So these are the ones that create the students to be uh, to be scared by the parents. So I have to explain to them not all bamboo miang, and there's way to clear the miang so that when they touch the the little uh, brushes of hair, it not it's not there anymore. So over time, you can easily clear this uh, level of like up to seven feet high, so that no no uh, itchiness can get into the you know allergy to the students uh, there are also species that has no uh, that bristle 
uh, I also built up the uh, out of the 10 ideas that I presented just now. Uh, let me check back. That is the students actually need constant exposure. If the teacher is not putting their effort or the, the, the supervisor is not pushing, putting, uh, you know, hopping onto them from time to time, they will be forgotten. So once the, the bamboo system is within the school, they see it every day, they ask a lot of questions and teachers have to Google to find the answer for the children. And then we have been con uh, conducting mentor mentee, uh, whereby young fellows that don't have any skill about bamboo but like to put uh, you know, participate because they have land. So we assign uh, people with uh, plantation to guide them for one year only. So they will plant together, like uh, one uh, lady named Zahara who prepared uh, making uh, bulo madu, gagentoklea uh, abosilata, to become acha. You know, so she tend to buy back from those people who plant around the area where she stays so she become the mentor and they are the mentee uh, and then uh we we like all the time to be active this is all about uh volunteering it's not it's not easy when there's no money you have to you know uh, pull out a lot from your own pocket but because of love we do that you know you do anything for love so that's from me let's love bamboo thank you thank you uh all right, probably this is question to Mr. Ramesh here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, is Mr. Ramesh here still? Yes, go ahead. Okay, uh, okay. Okay, okay. So, what is your expectation from the competition? The outcome oh. from the competition from the student? Okay. What you really, uh, what the wow factor that you expected hey, from them? <laughs> okay, great. Uh, good question. Now, uh, the wow factor from students' perspective or from the school perspective, um, of course, we would like to recognize the ideas that are um, spectacular, which is really wow, okay? Uh, mm -hmm. Meaning to say that we want an idea in any of the categories uh, to, be, to be implemented, you know, that the likelihood that it can be implemented in the school. So sometimes some of the ideas are very grandiose, but uh, execution of it is going to be a problem. Uh, therefore, one of the key factor will be that how feasible would it to be implemented? Because the winning idea should be one that can be uh, implemented in the school, right? So that is one. Um, the other thing is from the perspective of the Malaysia Bamboo Society, if I can speak on behalf of Dr. Mazalina, uh, we want an idea that really represents the uh, association to say that this is the wonderful um, features or properties of bamboo uh, in terms of its flexibility, in terms of its appearance, uh, aesthetic value. So we will be proud. So imagine Malaysia Bamboo Society uh, lands its brand and say that this is what we want to see. All right. So the expectation uh, from, I think, uh, from us would be this. Like one is from the perspective of the organizer. We would like to be seen championing great ideas uh, and of course from the school perspective we like it to be easily executed in the school yep. yeah uh, maybe dr hyrule i can just add one more point yeah. now yeah. We work very closely with some of the school they call it jabatan pendidikan in particular jabatan pendidikan uh, bangsa pudu daerah bangsa pudu now they have got one initiative called the green economy right so i was fortunate to be sitting in one of their committees and they're going to roll out this program you know to promote green economy all right so i actually invited them to sit in for this um, but even if we don't have a representation then i will continue to pursue with them to say that park this idea of the bamboo challenge uh, and also the bamboo initiative under the green economy so there is something there that we look forward to so all teachers who are uh, tuning on today, please do take note that you will have some very strong encouragement from the schools, from the Ministry of Education as well. All right, thank you, thank you for the information. Right, I we have one question from Jennifer Lowe. Yeah, do you conduct bamboo study field trips for public to join, like families with school going uh, school going children? So perhaps, uh, Datuk Mazarina. 
yeah can 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 answer this question um uh, conduct bamboo field trip okay there are places uh, with bamboo system or bamboo park in Malaysia. I think I could recall four. Uh, the first one is in Frim, in Kepong, where actually you can visit uh, Taman Buloh there, a small one. But it is a hectare of uh, samples of bamboo being planted, 40, 45 species gathered. But they are also in other uh, Station Penyelidikan Frim. There, there are uh, places all over Malaysia. So if you're not in Sel uh, Selangor, you can. They, they are in uh, Mata Air Perlis, uh, in in Stiu, Terengganu. Uh, you know, a lot of places. I, I can't recall now, but uh, you just um, survey. I mean, go into Frim and Google their SPF where they have uh, bamboo plantations uh, all over Malaysia because of their uh, research. Uh, activities that need to test different type of soil okay so other than that uh, uh, the one in uh, Taman Botany Putrajaya is also we would like uh, they also has established a bamboo system over there a collection and then Johor by the Med uh, Medini and also uh, the school the first uh, Sekolah Rendah uh, the primary school is the Sekolah Clifford you can Visit. So together this, what we can do, we normally um, have it at different, different places of AGM. If you like to visit, maybe we can conduct a one-day trip, uh, you know, to a place with bamboo collection. And we open to all our members. So this can be of our else. Uh, what the teachers can do is write to us. We can show you where are the nearest place to the school that your your sons or your your families can go along with the you know like a trip, a day trip. That will be fun. Uh, plenty of places. I will I will list a few and and uh, of these uh, places of bamboo park in Malaysia. And uh, I think uh, Cik Hamid is in the group now. Uh, Cik Hamid, can you list out all the the places because uh Ajami is from Sungai Jernih LNG uh, plantations near Merhat. They have planted a thousand hectare hectare. So that's why uh, that's uh that's purely one or two type of species. But you like to see more and learn. Uh it can be done. Uh let us uh, uh collect the type the, the 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 location of these places for visit so you can do it with your school too. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, Dr. Madalina. Perhaps, uh, yeah, MBS also planning to have a, a MTIB also planning to have a bamboo one-stop center. Yeah, this is under planning. Yeah, so it will become as a one-stop center for uh, so that the school children, yeah, all researchers can can come to either to contribute or maybe also to learn a lot of things in this particular one-stop center yeah in the future all right so <clears throat> um is there any more question yeah from the from the floor if any you can directly uh what do you call yeah uh, uh ask the question yeah i i i just want uh prof cairo to highlight to listeners about when is the last date of your uh, exhibition? Because okay. you have bamboo. All right. uh, okay. Please highlight. <laughs> okay. I, I'm having my solo exhibition at uh, Gallery Serdang UPM. So I'm, uh, I'm, I'm showing some of my bamboo product. Yeah. And the exhibition is called Inspi Karya Kairul Aidil Ajin Abdul Rahman is at the uh, gallery sedang faculty of design and architecture upm so the exhibition is now open uh, until the 20th of october so everybody are invited to to this uh, exhibition so i also shown some of my research uh, using bamboo material yeah from uh, and make it into uh, furniture products yeah so everybody are welcome on that okay um, <clears throat> the, yes may I, 
I uh, congratulate you for the exhibition. Um, Thank you. I definitely like to come, uh, but not by myself, but with a big delegation of students and all. Right. Uh, so, yes. uh, bearing in mind uh, earlier, there was a question, you know, as to which visits where they can visit. I think uh, the visit to your exhibition should be one of the stops. And uh, as part of our initiatives, uh, stand for all maker space, probably be keen to organize like a uh, what do you call organized tour together yeah. with the Bamboo Society. So remember just now we say we need to inspire the students and all. All right. So I can imagine a situation where we bring in, let's say, 40 students, um, visit the exhibition and then do a little workshop or yeah. you can give them an overview. So it becomes part of a program. Right. And you can you can contact me personally, no yeah. problem. Any teachers? Yeah. If but this you, is you want to bring your your uh, something. Students, yeah, please. What, one yeah, last ah oh, sorry, Prof. I need yes. to highlight the Langkawi International Bamboo Festival yes. that is coming twenty third to twenty sixth of November this year. I hope everybody uh gear up to go to Langkawi and experience the festival. Uh, because we collaborate together with the, the organizer. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, maybe the committee, any of uh, Yanti can can co uh, paste the the advertisement of Langkawi Membu Festival. Yeah, so that the some of the member can take uh, note on the information. Yeah. Well, I think. Uh, if, if no question anymore, yeah, I would like to conclude our our webinar today. Yeah, as we embark to this journey together, remember that uh, for the competition, every small idea has a potential to transform, and every action, no matter how modest, reverberates through time. Let the webinar become this webinar become a catalyst to a new perspective, creative aspiration, and share commitment to weaving bamboo wisdom into the tapestry of our school. So, yeah. <laughs> so let us embrace an accent of bamboo and embark on this enlightening exploration, a journey that promises to ignite minds foster collaboration and create a legacy of sustainability a living for generations to come so uh on from that note i would like to thank all the panels mr matthias gelbel is uh prof nakula Uta from indonesia dr magalina manso the president of malaysia bamboo society and mr ramesh pilai yeah, uh, from the STEM from Malaysia and and all the committee members of Membu, uh, Malaysia Bamboo Society. I think this webinar is considered successful and we get very insightful information and discussion. With that note, thank you very much for your attention and we meet, we see you again in the next Melentul bulu biarlah dari rebungnya. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.